Margaret, a 17-year-old, is dead after being gunned down inside one of the city's housing developments today. Police say Bobby Davis was hit several times while he was riding his bicycle in the Magnolia Project. They have no suspects or motives for the murder. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, Crime Stoppers is offering a reward. The phone number to call, 822-1111. Well, tonight, police are still investigating another violent episode in New Orleans. This latest killing brings the city's murder total now to 203. And experts are warning us to expect an increase in murders during the summer months. They found a statistical connection between heat and homicide. Those findings show that there is no ceiling, that the hotter it gets, the, the more there's a direct increase in the number of homicides. And the numbers from last year appear to prove that theory. Homicides in the third quarter were nearly as high as those from the first half of the year combined. Chris, police say from July to September is their busiest time of year, and this summer is no different. And some neighbors we talked to say they've already noticed an increase in crime in their community. The year 1994 remains a powerful point of reference for every New Orleanian who lived through it, which begs the question, what if anything else does that violent year have to teach us about what is happening now? In the early to mid-1990s, it was going down like four flat tires. James Tapp, a.k.a. Soldier Slim, would put it the best. If you was out here off the porch and lived past 94, you a gangster. In 1994, 424 people were murdered in New Orleans, making that the highest recorded number in the city's modern history. Damn near every project in the Inno was cutting up. The Jack Boys were in full effect. So-called experts would say what may explain the city's high homicide rate is widespread poverty. Nearly a third of its residents are poor, the second highest rate in the nations after Detroit. New Orleans also had the nation's highest rate of abandoned housing and the third highest rate for single mother household and birth to teen girls. Now this update for you at six, nearly 17 years in the making, a hitman hired by a former New Orleans police officer to kill a woman was sentenced to life in prison. 44-year-old Paul Hardy avoided the death penalty after a judge ruled Hardy was mentally retarded. Back in 1994, former NOPD officer Lynn Davis hired Hardy to kill Kim Groves after Groves filed a brutality complaint against Davis. Kim Groves' two children addressed the court before today's sentencing. Lynn Davis, by the way, is currently appealing a death sentence. Blackie Mo, a notorious street figure from the Magnolia Project who ran the grimy streets of New Orleans, was known for staying fresh, but will be more infamously known for hitting licks and busting them guns. The young wild dudes coming up in the project looked up to Blackie Mo. For the little dudes that were close to Blackie Mo, he put them on game, grooming them to be young hitters. Another notorious street figure that was going with the move on shit was Gaylord. No stranger to the street, Gaylord, more often than not, would be found rocking with Blackie Mo. Them boys was pulling off all kind of capers, jacking shit. Dudes hustling on the set would grip up or break camp every time that boy Gaylord would come around. Gaylord earned a name and reputation in the streets. Gaylord at one point was even cool with the Hardy brothers out the yoke. That's, right. That's my friend Gaylord. He a, he a, he finna make no, he a cooler dude. He's still alive. And yeah, he's still living. I don't know how long, but... <laughs> no matter if Gaylord was drugging or not, Blackie Moo would always look out for him. 
What was the reason for Blackie Mo always looking out for him, you may ask? The answer is pretty cut and dry. Gaylord will once save the life of Blackie Mo. The story goes like this. Them boys went on a lick in the Melphamine Project. However, all would not go as planned on the lick. Blackie Mo would get caught up trying to go with the move and be jammed up on the ramp. Stuck on the ramp with nowhere to go, face to face with his ops, Blackie Mo was shit out of luck and about to meet his fate. Just when he thought it was over for him, Gaylord would start letting off, allowing Blackie Mo to be able to escape the ramp. All would not be sweet, however, for Gaylord, as he would be grazed in the nuts during the altercation. Lucky enough, Gaylord and Blackie Mo would hop in the cab and flee the scene. Both would live to see another day. Gaylord would eventually heal from his wounds. Needless to say, Gaylord saved Blackie Moe's life that night. A lot of murders committed in broad daylight, maybe playing two-hand touch football. And a guy just walk up to another guy and just shoot him. 20, 30 times. And you stuck as a child, you can't move because you really don't know what to do. So, you know, you just stuck right there. And over time, it, it, it becomes normal to where, it's, oh, somebody's got a kid around, oh, okay, whatever. And that's pretty much how it was growing up in the Magnolia Project. Tillman says he's noticed a summer surge in violent crime. There has definitely been more crime since the summer. Mm -hmm. Since this summer has begun. Mm -hmm. And we've had more killings. Mm -hmm. We expected this uptick in, in homicides. And Assistant Police Superintendent Marlon DeFillo commenting after four people were killed in less than 24 hours last week, including a double murder here in the Iberville housing development. So traditionally, we see an increase in the summer was because everyone's outside. The murder rate in New Orleans has already surpassed last year's, and the negativity that comes with the killings, once again, making national headlines. WDSU reporter Gina Swanson explains that the bad publicity comes at a time when people all across America are keeping a close eye on what's happening here in the Crescent City.